Welcome to the Diary of Discovery, the podcast where we delve deep into the human experience of healing and transformation. I'm your host, Jackie Carr, and each week we will sit down with inspiring individuals who have embarked on their own personal journeys of healing and self-discovery. From overcoming trauma to navigating life's challenges, our guests share their raw and honest stories, offering insights, wisdom, and hope to all who tune in. So grab your favorite cup of tea, find a cozy spot, and join us as we uncover the power of resilience, courage, and the pursuit of authenticity. This is The Diary of Discovery. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm literally so excited. This episode, for anyone who um, has not listened to the podcast before, this is a great place to start because the energy is going to be off the charts today. I just know it. We are welcoming the lovely Michelle. Michelle, please tell our listeners who you are and where you are in the world. Hello, hello, Jackie. Oh, it's nice to see you again. I love that little cheeky face of yours. I'm Michelle Thomas. I run the Happy Business Club and um, I'm pretty much cake obsessed. And I bloody love Jackie. I've loved her for years and I've forgotten how wonderful she is and how wonderful it is to be in her energy and her space. She's just a, such a beautiful, smiley soul. And um, I'm just that excited to be on this podcast today. I don't even know what we're talking about. What are we talking about? It's all good. I've got you. We're gonna we're gonna keep this we're gonna keep this podcast going like we do with all of the others, taking us right back to the start of your healing journey. So the moment that life broke for you, mm-hmm. tell us what that was. Um do you know what it, you know? You know, you know what it's like when you've got when you think about your life. There's lots of different points, um, but one of the biggest things that hit me in my life. I had a great childhood. I put my hands up and say I had a beautiful childhood. Um, everything that I reminisce about was absolutely amazing. I mean, it wasn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination because I've carried lots of baggage along the along with me, and you know, I wouldn't be human if I didn't. But um, my um, crashing point when everything kind of came crashing down and when I kind of like zoomed into what life was actually all about um and the dark side of it was when I was uh 37 I want to say Mm, 37 something like that in my in my 30s and uh, like mid 30s and I'd spent um, the vast majority of my life and uh, a whole 10 year marriage saying that I didn't want to have children. Um, and then I met my second husband and that literally just turned in on a like on a second. In a second, I just went from not wanting children to in my mid 30s saying, right, let's go and have children. So we got married and I fell pregnant really quickly and everything was fine. And I moved halfway across the country to be with my family so that I could bring up a child. I had plans of running a business, um, but I was going to get the the childbirth out of the way first. Um, And I got to 40 weeks and 10 days. So I was well overdue. Um, Everything was fine. And that night, I basically lost my baby. Um, I had a stillborn stillborn baby called Jacob. I had to give birth to him naturally. Um, It was a horrific time. And it was the time of the Queen's Jubilee as well. And I spent the whole of the Jubilee weekend, I remember quite vividly, in a box in a room with no natural light, um, off my head on um, drugs. I don't know what drugs do they give you. Whatever drugs that they give you when you're giving birth to a child. Um, And how do you recover from that? How how the hell do you recover from that? Bearing in mind that I hadn't had any major tragedies in my life up until that point. I mean, I'd lost my grandma and things like that, but some people have a lot of trauma that they have to get over. And, and this was something that kind of came all at once in, in a really weird time in my life. Um, so I moved I left my job. I was ready for a baby. No baby came. And um, about six weeks after that happened, I was like, what on a walk with my sister, trying to figure out what I was going to do in my life that, you know, I'd moved lock, stock and barrel. I wasn't going to go back to London and, uh, you know, take up my old job. I'd I'd pretty much gone on maternity leave. and, And luckily, I was entitled to maternity leave for the full 
um, nine months. Um, and I, um, I, I had a chat with my sister and she says, well, why don't you ring up um, Baby Ballet? So Baby Ballet is a franchise uh, that's based in Halifax. And it was something that I planned on doing once I'd had my baby after six months. This was, That was the plan. Plans never usually go according to plan. So I, this was a Wednesday. I rang them up and they said, come in on Friday. We've got an open day. And I went two days later, bearing in mind six weeks earlier, I'd lost my baby. And I was going into a place where they do classes for babies. Um, and I signed on the dotted line. They knew about it. That I did tell them I was open and honest and I signed on the dotted line. And I always say that that saved me because mm -hmm. um, even though I had to set up classes and get um, parents to come in and with their children and stuff, and I, I did used to go to all the classes as well initially because I had a new teacher and I had to make sure everything was fine and that I developed relationship with the parents and stuff. I used to sit there at the back of the class at the end of every class and cry my eyes out when the lullaby came on, which was the final song. Um but I still went and this was the like the, the kernel of the little seed of the resilience building that I had to kind of forge from the trauma of, um, you know, having a child that, that didn't live. And um, yeah, the, the beginning of the resilience, that's where it all came from, the, build, the building and the, it's not that I wasn't resilient, it was that I acknowledge the fact that this was where things kind of started for me, that things were hard, that life was hard and that that we can't get away from that. We have to lean into it and get the best out of life, regardless of whether it's hard or not. So I went on a journey after that of rebuilding myself. I say that Baby Ballet did save me. It, it, it really did. I had a brilliant support network. Um, anything that I needed, I was I was part of. And um, I kind of went from strength to strength. I built a lot of strength off the back of that. Um, and I've still got that business to this very day. I still have it. It's changed in so many ways. We went through the pandemic. We lived off fumes towards the end of it. It wasn't just me. It was that um, community as well because we had people all over the country actually jumping on calls every day and trying to you know get our ourselves through it through the pandemic and it wasn't it wasn't easy everybody thinks that we were sitting around and you know drinking cocktails in the sunshine and you know wondering if we were gonna you know, our husband was gonna be made redundant and you know just having a laugh and a giggle and doing Joe Wicks but it wasn't like that at all. It was very much, we had to turn on a sixpence. We had to change the way that we did things literally overnight and we had each other's backs and it was amazing. Um, and, and it really does give you a hell of a lot of strength. One of the other things that I did as well, and it's the tiniest, tiniest little things, this has had a real impact on me as well, is, and I can't remember if I did this beforehand, but I made a point of getting out of bed and making my bed as soon as I got out. You hear this a lot don't you um and once I started doing that it was a habit that I picked up that actually meant that I started my day it was a routine that actually kicked in a really good energy of right let's do this and that's very much the way that I live now 12 years on from you know a, a, t a serious tragedy um that is very much how I live my life now let's do this <laughs> oh gosh so Firstly, like, I'm so sorry for your loss. And thank you so much for sharing that. Like, I think, again, this is a topic that so many people don't talk about and don't lean into. So, like, I absolutely just honor and see you. And I'm so glad that we're talking about this because I think it's incredible to give people the space to just hear and be able to kind of process their own thoughts around this. So thank you. And I guess, like, I want to know, as you were going through that, what changed in you? Like, what did you have to embrace about yourself and understand about yourself to kind of get through that? Um, I think it's this whole idea of, you know, if anybody's going to pull you out of anything, it's going to be you. It's great that you've got support, but ultimately, if you don't pick yourself up and do it, then nobody else can do that for you. Um, and you have to hang on to the little things because the little things, when you put them all together, actually make a big, massive difference. And when you get when you go through trauma, you don't have the energy 
to do big things. You only have the energy to, to do the tiny things. And when we talk about trauma, we're not necessarily tr talking about, but they call it big T, they call it big T trauma, don't they? Not necessarily big traumatic things. I mean, I say that I don't didn't have a lot of trauma in my life. I probably did, but there were only little things that we kind of like build upon. Um, mm -hmm. And so this idea has been kind of taking root, um, and especially like many, many years later when I went full circle and I did um, uh, what started working back in stress management and I, I flipped it around and I started calling it happiness because I just, you know, I came up with a happy business club. I was like, well, let's just, let's just call it happiness instead of stress management. Let's just make it a really positive thing. And when I flipped it around and I started doing things like that, it was a, a, a real um, foundation for me um and that's where I found my foundations because I never felt like I was particularly stable I mean I think when you're a creative person anyway and you're always up in the air and doing this and you know you kind of go with the flow a little bit sometimes that stability you know it, the firm footing's not always there but the idea of um little things making a difference consistency in that respect making a difference and actually getting good at stuff through doing things that are, are not overly traumatic and not overly difficult and being intentional about it is the thing that creates that foundation and for me that was life-changing because I literally built everything beyond that on top of that to where I am now um yeah so that, that was a big thing I never really thought of it like that but I think I did. <laughs> it must have been somewhere in my brain. This is something I love about this podcast. So many guests have said when they've gone through the questions and they've gone through the interview and they've come out the other side, they're like, oh, that was actually a really healing thing for me. Just like mm. thinking about it in that way and actually like looking at the steps I took. So like, you're not alone. I'm so glad. And the next question I want to kind of dive into is as you were going through this, like, healing can be such a difficult thing and as you said you don't have much capacity and there's a lot that's going on and you know from the initial trauma the pandemic like you've mentioned a number of kind of different things were there moments where you felt like you just couldn't do it where you just like your resilience was just at its at its low and you just felt like you didn't know what you were going to do do you know what I've got a funny feeling that I've forgotten a lot of those times but it's it's the times when I cried and um, the times when I pulled the duvet over my head and I didn't want to come out. The times where I literally felt like I was wading through mud all the time. I think that that was probably an indication of what you're talking about. But never at any point did I say. I'm not going to move forward. I'm not going to keep going. I'm not going to. um I'm not going to do this. I don't want to do this anymore. I, there was never a single point at all from then that I didn't. I think that kind of like gave me some grounding in terms of strength to, to continue with my healing journey um, and develop the ideas of what it actually means and what is required to, to carry on with my life. So, yeah, yes and no, I think the answer is to, the, to your question. I was like, yeah, mm. but no, but yeah. <laughs> No, I, I I also had that kind of yes but no relationship. Like there were there were real like anchor points that I had to put in in my like like the whole like making the bed thing, like the start of the day and how I like got through those moments because they were really hard. But I also had that kind of like unwavering idea that I was gonna get through it like that it was always gonna be okay in the end so I like I absolutely understand that like even though it was hard I was always gonna walk the path like it was always gonna be the thing that was yeah. done I mean so. you have no choice you have no choice Jackie I mean ultimately you're gonna move forward or you're just gonna stop and life is just gonna pass you by and you, it's your choice to do that and some people do choose to do that and it absolutely breaks my heart that, you know, everybody else outside of them can see their potential, but they're not living up to even a fraction of the potential, not because they can't, but because they don't want to. And that's, that's a, you know, picking that up is is part of the radical responsibility that we have as humans. Um, but we also have freedom of choice. And if we don't want to, then it, that's entirely up to us. And nobody else is going to make us do that, are they? Um, so, yeah, it's... 
that drive that that moves you forward i think it is it's it's in the little things it's in the day to day things and it's that that feeling that that little seed of of uh, potential that you've got that you know that you've got and that belief around it that actually moves you forward yeah, yeah. i think i think we can agree on quite a few things in terms of this absolutely absolutely so what was your biggest outlook change or belief change as you were kind of going through this process about you know how you thought life was to how it was going to be going forward what changed for you oh do you know what Jackie I'm I'm one of these people with that's got rocks in my head I'm a big dreamer right I always think that things are going to go like really amazing which is not a bad thing to do but sometimes you had to kind of rein it in a little bit and I think part of the problem was that um as I as I grew up from from being a child one of the things that I always struggled with because I'm an introvert you wouldn't believe me but I am absolutely an introvert and I like my own company and I don't give my energy out willingly you know I don't throw it around I like to kind of keep it I call myself a chilled out panda rather than a rocket head I think extroverts are rocket heads and chilled out pandas kind of like to hold on to their energy a little bit um but I always had I always felt like I had an issue with around energy physical energy I'm talking about um and you know I was never particularly good at sports at school I always try I was a trier you know I, I think part of my resilience was built up through the fact that I was always trying and I was always lagging behind but I always tried um and um this this whole idea of being able to hold on to your energy really stuck in my head I felt like I, was, I never had enough energy to do the things that I wanted to do and I had this idea that I'd want to be this vibrant person that was full of energy that you know I had enough energy to kind of go around and make an impact on other people but I, I never found it physically and I, I never found it there was just the odd time now and again where it's like oh that's what it feels like so I knew what it looked like I knew what it felt like but I was always striving to move towards that so you do your usual you know you you, you try to eat better and you try to drink more water and you try to sleep and stuff and it kind of goes off the boil and you start back to where you are and you feel like you're going around in circles and um I very much had, it wasn't a half moment, it wasn't really an epiphany, but it was like a gradual dawning that if I was going to, if I was going to grab hold of that kind of vibrant energy, I would have to manifest this myself. By manifestation, I mean, I was going to have to put in the work to meet the universe halfway so that I can take on this energy and actually create what I wanted to create. So there was this it was when I first started the Happy Business Club. Now, I, I I don't even, you might have been there that day. I went absolutely mental on one of our calls with Lisa Bean. And I was like, I didn't even have the Happy Business Club. I was trying to do some work for somebody else. I was trying to learn all this stuff for somebody else. And then all of a sudden, it's like, I'm doing this for myself, not for anybody else. Let's go out and do this. But I wasn't quite sure what this was. All I knew was it was about moving forward, um, you know, becoming who you are, um, having a great life um, and being happy in, t in terms of being a business. So I went on a, a journey of discovery and it started off, this all links together, just bear with me, all right? It started off with this idea that I wanted to touch my toes because I was in my mid-40s and it was shocking to me that I couldn't even bend over and touch my toes, all right, that's how terribly unfit I was. Um, and it was all, all down to me. I could have done something about it. Um, and um, no matter how hard I tried, I, I just kind of never got there. So at this point in time, it's like, right, the only thing that I'm going to do is keep trying to touch my toes. And it took me 13 days. So I started and every day I did a little bit, stretched myself out, touched my toes. After 13 days, I managed to touch my toes. And I swear to God, You've never seen anybody so delighted in their life as I was when I managed to touch my toes and I got my sister-in-law to record it for me for posterity. Anyway, so that was just the beginning of it. And then there was this idea of, right, if I can do that little tiny bit, what other tiny little bits can I do? And so I kind of leaned into the whole, well, as a human being, as a you know bag of bones with some meat on top of it, 
what do we actually need to keep ourselves going to actually create this energy? And I was always into energetics. I was always fascinated by the way that energy works and flows and masculine and feminine, feminine and physical and neurological and, and biological and all that, how that works. Um, and I just thought, what are, what are the basics of this? And the basics of it, what I call the five fundamentals, sleep. Literally, if you don't get enough sleep and good quality sleep, then everything else goes to shit. All right. Movement, not exercise. I'm talking movement. Literally, a body was designed to move, not to burn flipping calories, but to actually keep your heart pumping, keep your lymphatic system going, keep your blood cells moving, keep your, your lungs going so that you actually get oxygen. You're like a machine and movement actually creates the energy in that machine hydration we are made up of water we need water it's going in it's coming out it's going in it's coming out and we need to keep replenishing and if we don't do that then we're going to suffer the we're just going to turn into little raisins you know we're not raisins we're grapes and then what was the other thing so we've done sleep uh, oh nourishment and it was just literally macros and micros, macros and micros at the very basic level. As human beings, we need some vitamins and minerals and we need some macros in the form of protein, fats and stuff like that. However you want to do that, that's the stuff that we need, all of it. And we need it as building blocks of our biology. And so we have to make sure that we're getting the stuff that we need. So whether that's intuitively or strategically, or a bit of both that's what we need to be doing and we do it in tiny little ways it's more sustainable and the final piece of the puzzle was and this was quite an important one because most people can't brush it off because they because it's a biological thing they, th they don't think that this is part of it but it absolutely is and your brain is part of your body and it's all intertwined and it's all interlinked most of your body works off the back of your brain anyway if you're not looking after your brain and your mind and your soul and your psyche then it, you you know your body's you do your body a disservice so um i call it vitamins for the soul the, st the shit that makes you happy you know the stuff that lights you up like a freaking christmas tree you gotta be doing that not just whenever somebody reminds you or when you go into a party or whatever or you know scheduling it into your calendar it's every single flipping day to the point where you don't even realize you're doing it and for me, one of the big things is, is that I'm a very creative person. I like consuming the ideas of other people, very much like yourself. I like consuming the stories of other people. I like thinking about things and mulling through things and seeing how things connect. And that gets my brain going. And I'm sure that absolutely feeds my brain. No, I'm not sure. I know that it feeds my brain because I do it every single day. I either read or listen to podcasts or see what other people have written or speak to people. And that feeds me. If I don't have that in my life, then all of sudden my mood's gonna go and then my sleep goes and then all the other stuff goes all out the window and I feel like I'm back to square one so I started by tracking the tiny tiny little things and I'll tell you now it's nearly three years since that that when I first touched my toes I still do that stuff to this very day don't have a tracker anymore because I don't need it but I do it even like the stretches I used to do I started off stretching just some basic stre yoga stretches it takes me two minutes and I still don't do that to this day and the day that I started was the day that my body started changing the way that it, it processed pain the way they fell and stuff like that and I've been on a massive journey since then I mean you you jumped on earlier and you said I hardly recognized you I hardly recognized you and I says well yeah I might have lost a couple a few stone and I might change my hair and different glasses and I might have a few more wrinkles and stuff but that's not the thing that really changed for me stepping into this whole idea of a vibrant person was the thing that changed and I reached that I couldn't even tell you when it was, but I started feeling great every day, not just physically, but mentally. Um, people say, oh, you know, are you like this all the time? Are you happy and thingy? I says, pretty much, you know, 95% of the time I wake up like this. I turn my day into this. This is what I aim for and this is what I get. Shit happens, yes. I get sad sometimes, yes. So there are the odd days where I can't be bothered getting out of bed, but I still do, and I still make my bed, and I still go on my merry way, and things change through the day. And if it's possible for me, it's possible for every other human on this planet. Absolutely.
Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I think it's so interesting because when I think about my healing journey, it was similar in the sense of it was all the small things. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like this dramatic, like, oh, suddenly I did this one thing and everything was fine. It was, you know, a very similar. I started to do yoga regularly. I started to run. I started to listen to uplifting podcasts and, um, I literally, I remember plugging into Les Brown, um, going on my, going on a run, plugging into Les Brown and just listening to his like motivational, like 40 minutes. And I mean, I didn't, I didn't run very far. I wasn't very fit at the time. (laughs) Like, but the same thing, like I, it was just like bringing that energy back into my body, bringing that life force back into my body and getting myself back to that point of being able to feel good. Because if your body isn't functioning it is really hard for you to feel good and I think that's what a lot of people don't understand is if your body isn't functioning if you're not supporting your body and giving it what it needs it cannot support you it cannot help you it cannot like hold you in the way that it's supposed to Mm -hmm. and our bodies are the most incredible things in the world like it literally blows my mind how like super our bodies nervous systems brains like that whole process is and for you so you went through this journey obviously as you said we were in a program together you weren't there to start a business for yourself that was not the plan but you did and we're you know we're, we're three years or whatever it is down the line now three or four years what like how did that whole journey go in the sense of moving this kind of purpose into the business that you were running like just talk to me about that journey I think I think it's just everything people talk about alignment um I I'm not one of these people who is particularly interested for myself at doing all the modalities around spirituality now that's a whole nother story so you know I'm not sound baths don't hold any interest for me and uh, you know cards you know the moon cycles and stuff like that I, I totally understand it I totally get it I totally where it, know where it comes from I understand the science behind it I understand the spirituality behind it but for me it's like it don't doesn't light me up um do you know what I've freaking forgotten the question <laughs> <laughs> of course um the journey of the business the purpose how it all oh, links together yes Okay, so it it was it was it was literally the alignment. It found me. I just kind of put, put one foot in front of the other and kept doing what I thought was right. I trusted myself. I trusted my intuition. Sometimes I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Sometimes I jumped into things and ended up doing some really random stuff, like um, becoming a catwalk model, um, opening opening up a t shirt shop by accident, uh, having a creating a magazine because I didn't want to write emails, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. But I swear to God, those are the best things. The happy accidents are the best things because you do it so whole wholeheartedly with the energy of playfulness and curiosity. And sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes it's an absolute nightmare. But when it is, when it does work out, it's absolutely the most um, awe-inspiring and amazing thing that you can grab hold of and shake the life out of. In fact, um, when I was 50, which was, was not that long ago, I turned 50. And one of the things that I wanted to do was go for afternoon tea, because obviously cake. Um, and I went with a friend of mine to Leeds, which isn't that far away. And we had afternoon tea in the most glorious hotel. It was just stunning. But we arranged, well, she, I, she arranged for me to have a tattoo done, because I said I wanted to get a tattoo on my 50th birthday. And my t- I've, got, I've got it on my wrist. And it says, six words, jump in, keep going have fun now at the time this yeah it's significant I had this idea I was going to do a tattoo let's just just put it on ink on my on my wrist so that it just never goes away I've got it there to remind me but it obviously has to be something important I didn't realize at that point how important it was going to be because let now those six words are feeding into absolutely everything that I'm doing 
because now it's not just about happiness. Now it's not just about the joyful things and the tiny little habits and things like I'm, I'm kind of like moving on to the next level. It's like, right, I've been talking about this for a few years now. You need to be getting this and keeping up with me now. So now it's about how do we get to the point where when the shit balls happen, so everything in life, like going back to the trauma and like, you don't know when that's going to happen. You don't expect it to happen, but it does happen. It happens to everybody. It happens to the best of us and we can't plan for it. But what can we do? We can bec become more resilient. Um, be the resilience comes back to those tiny little things. So your tiny little happiness habits, but tiny little self-care habits as well, making sure that you get what you need at any particular time and that you're doing it intentionally. It's this This idea of intention. So you're building resilience by, you know, facing the fear, facing the fire, you know, putting yourself in the firing line in a, at a time where it's safe for you to do so. Not when it's dangerous, when you're going to get your head chopped off. It's like it's like practicing um, karate or practicing martial arts and all the ninjas. They get good at it because they do. They pretend fight. They practice the fight or training for a marathon. You you get you get to the end of the marathon because you spent a lot of time training for it and going through the hard things at a time where you're not under so much pressure when this the, the space is safer. So that when you are put under pressure, you're already trained yourself to get there. And this is what I want to get across. 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago, I trained in stress management and hypnotherapy at a time where hypnotherapy was for hippies. Stress management and stress up in the workplace just wasn't a thing. No, nope. people was like, no, I can't be bothered going into work today or I've got to go into work today. I'm feeling under the weather. That was all it was. Stress in the workplace wasn't a thing. People didn't understand and recognize what it was. Um, and at that point in time, I, um, I, kind of like understood about health and well-being and that started to become a thing health and well-being well-being mental health nobody talked about mental health I don't think it was even a phrase and then eventually mm. it started becoming more aware and more in the arena and most people were talking about it people starting to understand about it people understood that hypnotherapy and all nervous system regulation stuff which is what you talk a lot about don't you Jackie all the nervous system regulation stuff is stuff that we can do to help ourselves but I think we've got to the point now where we're so aware of it. We know that we it's here, but what do we do about it other than just regulate ourselves? And now I'm saying this whole idea of training ourselves up to deal with shit balls, to deal with things in such a way that when we get there, we're freaking strong as hell. We are hardcore kick-ass people. That is the way that we're shifting. So it's not about you know, fixing something that's already gone wrong. It's about prevention Prevention being better than a cure, preventing the fact that we even get to that place, preventing the fact that, um, you know, we have to deal with things and it takes all our energy. Let's conserve our energy. Let's use that energy to make ourselves strong. And then when we get there, it's a lot easier. And this is all part of the healing journey. We do it naturally. We build resilience naturally, but it's how we build resilience that makes the difference in the long run as to how much energy we use when shit balls fly. And this is the thing that um, now I've integrated to my into my work. We're doing a, an amazing event at the back end of this year um, called Dream Builders and World Changers, specifically for small business owners, um, about specifically about building resilience. So we're going to be looking at failure. How are we going to fail? How are we going to practice failing so that when we have to fail, we're not, it doesn't hit us too badly. Um, how are we going to deal with money? Because money is a great energy and it's part of business and it needs to flow and, and we stop ourselves from doing it. How are we going to change the way that we make that money flow? How we do? How do we build resilience around it? How do we future-proof ourselves so that w it works for us and, it, and rather than us working for it? How do we create the vitality? We've been talking about energy quite a lot, um, but it's absolutely freaking vital. You can't do it without energy, you know, without physical energy and vitality. Um, so we're going to be talking about that. And these are all going to be, this is all going to be done by my expert friends as they know their shizzle and they know what they're talking about. And then there's going to be a, a little bit in there that kind of underpins that that for me is probably, and I didn't realize until recently how important this was, but for me is probably one of the most important things is that the connection is that, you know, the connection is the foundation. Who do you connect with? How do you connect with them? Because ultimately you're here as one person on the planet, you're going to do your stuff. And when you're building dreams and you're creating things in the world and you're making an impact, that, that connection between you and that person, that is a real, real important part of, where you go from there. I mean, 
The other stuff is you. So vitality and money and and failure is you, what's inside of you. It's internal. And then the connection is like, how do you meet the world? And that is something that we barely think about. We just, we we, we think, oh, we're going to go on social media. Are we going to, you know, connect with people? But these people are faceless. That's not real connection. It's visibility. It's being seen, but it's not real connection. And I think if you are going through some really hard times and you haven't got any friends, how do you pull yourself back out of that? Yeah, and when the shit hits the fan, that's when it really, really matters. And that's what we're talking about. When the shit hits the fan, what really matters? What are we going to do to make sure that the things that matter are there to help us when we when we actually come in, find ourselves in times of trouble? Yeah, I love that. I think that whole idea of like that social, like social media is great, but it's also a massive trap. Like, it's a massive trap in that idea of you put so much of yourself out on social media. And, like, especially as a small business owner, like, I see this all the time with my clients and myself and, you know, the people around me. And it can literally feel like you're just pouring into the ocean. Like, there's (laughs) just nothing coming back. And, you know, there's there's that lack of connection. I think that that is something that so many people are lacking and so many people their healing journey would be so much easier if they had that core group of people whatever that looked like like as you know a friend group a family a family group like it doesn't if one person like it doesn't even have yeah. to be loads of people like it doesn't it can be so simple but i think that that is something that is so so important is having that person that you can go to say i'm not okay this is not working yeah. I feel really down, you know, I need to bounce ideas around, like whatever it is, it's, it's so, so vital. And actually like you've given some really, really great kind of pieces already, but what would your advice be to somebody who is starting this journey is feeling really kind of like disconnected from their own energies, feeling really low is not, you know, not able to do the big things. Like what would your advice be to like, just get back to themselves? What does that look like? Well, I don't know if you know this Jackie, but I retired from coaching not that long ago. Ironically, when I was in the middle of a a coaching practitioner's course, (laughs) I just paid all this money. I said, I'm not doing coaching anymore. We'll just do some other stuff instead. But up until that point, and even beyond that point, I say I don't do coaching. I don't do coaching formally. I still ch- chat with people. I'm still that person there when somebody needs me that, that, that comes to me. Um, and one of the things that really – I don't get riled up too easily. I get excited, but I don't get riled up too easily. But what really gets my go, and this is the thing that I will recommend to people um, if all else fails – And it's always the crux of the problem. It goes back to this whole idea of make sure your energy is right. I mean, you you talked at length about it. Make sure your energy is right. But it's the self-care aspect. People think that self-care is external. Self-care, right? This is just a different perspective, but let's let's try it on for size. Self-care is you wake up in the morning, Right, so Jackie wakes up in the morning, she opens her eyes, the sunlight comes through, the maybe not the sunlight, maybe it's a bit of rain, but it doesn't really matter. The, the light hits your eyes, you, you, your body starts going and you take a breath and then all of a sudden, the next 24 hours, so before you find yourself in that position again, the next 24 hours, all 1,440 minutes of it, whatever, however many seconds of it is, is yours, not your husband's not your friends, you, you, it's your life, it's your body, it's your time, it's your energy, it's your money, it's everything about you belongs to you at that moment in time. And ultimately, it's down to you to decide where you're going to spend your time, your money, your energy. Self-care is claiming that before you start giving it away. So how are you going to claim that for yourself to make sure that your energy is in tip top condition before you start giving that energy away? You don't want to be giving rotten apples to your husband, do you? You want to give him nice juicy apples. So you've got to make sure that you're buffing those apples up and that you're giving him the best apples that you possibly can. But you've got to make sure that those apples are grown well 
So you feed yourself well, you make sure that you, you know, you focus on the good, great things in life, you practice gratitude, you practice nervous system regulation, you do your stretches, you drink your water, you listen to your podcast. If you've got no time, then you do the, the time that you spend um, on different things, you allocate that time intentionally, do things more mindfully, do things more intentionally. And just having that in your mind at the beginning of the day means that when you do give your time away, so if you have responsibilities, you do it willingly because you're, that is your responsibility. You take that res responsibility on and you don't blame other people for it because you were the one that decided that in the first place. And if you that's not aligned with what you want to do, then it's down to you to make sure that that's not something that you're going to do. Somebody asked me, how, how, do, you, how do you stay yeah, so, you know, happy most of the time. I was like, I do the things that I want to do and I don't do the things that I don't want to do. And effectively, that's what it is. If I want to make sure that I feel good today, then I know what I need to be doing. And that takes precedence over everything else. So I think if you want to step into the person who you are was meant to be. I mean, it's a good idea to have an idea of what what it what that is to you. I mean, for a very long time, I didn't know what that was, but this idea of vibrancy really took a hold of me. So that whatever that means for you, whether you want to make an impact, whether you want to look after your family, it's all about values. It's all about what is important to you in your life and how you're going to make um, not necessarily a difference to anybody else, but how you're going to live the life in a way that that, that means that you were worth it was worth living in the first place. So grabbing hold of that and actually doing the things that are important to you and coming back to that, even if it's, and this is the hard bit, even if it doesn't match with what everybody else expects you to um, and doing it right from the minute that you open your eyes will get you a heck of a long way to feeling really good about what you're doing and generating more of that energy. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? I feel, yes. I feel like I was rambling a little bit there. I, I, you know, sometimes it takes me a little while to get to the point. <laughs> <laughs> no, 100%. One of the biggest thoughts, and like I've shared this before on social media, and I'm sure I'll say it on the podcast a million times. Um, but one of the biggest things that has driven me insane about this kind of healing space for such a long time is this idea of self care, mm. and how the consumer market snatched onto it and turned it into something that had to cost a lot of money. You know, you had to be out at spa days and going on expensive holidays and, you know, getting massages every month. And like, yes, you can do all of those things. And if you love doing all of those things, do them. That's absolutely fine. But that's not self-care. Like those things are not actually self-care. And I think that like, that idea that so many people get stuck in like, oh, I can't look after myself well because I can't afford it. And I can't, you know, do the, like, it literally blows my mind. I'm like, no, you've just bought into an absolutely nonsense story that the media wants you to buy into so that you keep buying rubbish that you don't need and over consuming and doing all of the things that they want you to do. But actually, <laughs> if you just looked after yourself and like, the tiniest things drinking sleeping stretching like it's like the tiniest things that you can do at home for five minutes like it's it doesn't have to be something that takes a long time like it doesn't have to be something that is a big stretch or and like now I always laugh now because I am busy building up to run my first full marathon next year and I have run three half marathons this year and if you'd asked me like three years ago, if I was ever going to run a marathon, I would have told you that you were insane <laughs> because like <laughs> going out running was like the hardest thing for me. But it was so interesting because running wasn't the point when I started. My mental health was the point. Yeah. And so it didn't matter how far I ran or how fast I ran or what I looked like while I ran or like nothing else mattered other than the fact that I was moving my body. And then suddenly when the depression had lifted and I felt like a human again, as I call it, like I felt like myself again, I suddenly realized that I actually really loved running. Like I actually still really loved the act of it. And then I joined a running club and I started doing all of these things. And none of that costs money. Like me going out and running, it didn't cost me anything. I literally ran around the area that I lived in. Like now, obviously I run races and I'm in a club and there's a bit of money involved with that, but I can just put my shoes on and go outside and do the thing. And there's this real misconception. So I love the fact 
that you're talking about self-care in its like its purity of what it actually is and what it actually means and I think that idea of people really understanding their values is really important yeah because a lot of people have depression anxiety you know poor mental illness like mental health because they are disconnected from what is actually truly important to them because they are so caught up in that story of oh if I do these things and tick these boxes and follow this path and I've heard so many people on the podcast that have been guests that felt exactly the same way I did where suddenly you wake up and you think I've ticked all the boxes and I'm still absolutely miserable Mm -hmm. like what on earth is wrong with me and actually there's nothing wrong with you there's something wrong with the system that we live in yeah and actually bring it back to this absolute like core do the things that make you happy and don't do the things that don't make you happy and align your life as often as you possibly can to that point so that you're doing more of what you like and less of what you don't like how simple is that yeah. like oh and there's another tip among, uh, amongst all of that because so, there's, there's stuff in our lives that we really don't like doing but we really really it's kind of a, a necessity like the washing and you know the, the <laughs> yeah the stuff like that the, you know the, it's like oh, I've got to do it all over again it's like I only just washed that stuff yesterday it's back in the wash basket again um I, I, I have got no problem with the washing but I think it, it's that whole oh my god you know I've got to do it all over again yes you're going to be doing washing for the rest of your freaking life you might as well bloody well enjoy it find ways of enjoying it and have this thing called meh magic. So how do you create that kind of energy around something that is absolutely boring, but that needs to be done because it's part of the important stuff in life, like keeping yourself clean and, you know, you know, having nice, nice clothes and things like that and respect for your environment and things like that. So is I always think that it's a really good idea to kind of like G your energy up whilst you're doing it. And for me, it could be different things for different people. But for me, the easiest way is sticking a tune on the tune, the tune. Every time you get up in the morning, if you are not feeling up to par, if you're not bouncing out of bed, stick your tune out, tune on, get out of bed and bounce around to the tune in your PJs. It's my favourite thing to do and I guarantee it it lifts you in an instant. And everybody's tune's different, but we want something that's going to create that kind of energy. But if you start pairing it with things that you that you don't particularly enjoy doing then it makes, it changes the energy of how you do it. And I think, just top Top tip, the meh magic. All the meh stuff, just make it magical. Sing, dance, tell, talk to yourself, tell yourself stories, get other people involved. I mean, body doubling is a, a form of that, even though people say it's about accountability. It, it isn't. It's about the magical energy of having somebody there with you to help you along and feel comforted by that. So, yeah, all of that stuff, all of that stuff. I love it so much. It's so good. And I like I know that me and you could talk about this for probably a whole day because it's so good. I'm coming to um, South Africa. We're going on a yeah, weekend. Get on chat all the time. I mean, don't get on a plane now. It's winter. Wait a couple right. of months, then you can get on a plane. <laughs> it's got to be better than it is over here. It's horrific here, Jackie. <laughs> so my final question to you is around your own healing journey. So we know the healing is a continuum. We know that there's big things and small things, but we're always like people like us. We're always moving forward. We're always looking for bigger, better, more more exciting things. So what's the next level of healing for you? I think it's it's just keeping going. It's back to the, it's literally living, living the tattoo that I put on my wrist with indelible ink. What's it say? Jump in, keep going, have fun. And, and, it's the it's the aftermath of that it's the the fact that if i can help people um whether i know it or not but if i keep doing it and i trust that other people will be impacted by that i mean it's great when when i find out that you know i've made an impression on somebody it's it's fabulous it's like, like keeps me going it makes me all excited about the fact that it was all worth it but even if i don't just having the trust that it it will it will make a difference um it's hard it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, and you, again, you just got to keep your energy up. You've got to keep yourself belief up. You've got to work on yourself every single day to make sure that that's the energy that you bring. And it literally, if that is the only thing that I did for the rest of my life, then I would die happy. 
I'd die happy. I love that. Oh, I love that so much. Well, I can tell you that you bring so much good energy into the world. It has been an absolute joy talking to you on the podcast. I love this so much. So thank you so much for joining us. And I cannot wait to hear what the listeners have to say about this episode. Oh, you are flipping well welcome. I just love to see your cheeky face. If, if you're not watching this on um, on the clips and stuff, if you should not put the clips on and you're just listening on, on the podcast, you've got to see Jackie's face. She's just beaming the whole time. I, this, is, this is the only reason I came in the first place. <laughs> I love it. Well, I will keep this up so that we can keep getting podcast guests. How about Woo-hoo! that? Woo-hoo! Thank you so much, Michelle. It's been incredible. Thank you for listening to another inspiring episode of The Diary of Discovery. If you found value in today's conversation, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and share it with your friends, family, or anyone else you think might benefit from the stories of hope and transformation. Your feedback means the absolute world to us. So please take a moment to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your reviews help us to reach even more listeners and continue to bring this meaningful content to the world. Until next time, remember, your healing journey is valid. You are never alone and you have the strength to get through this. Keep shining bright and we'll see you in the next episode of The Diary of Discovery.